Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. So we're going to be talking about geometry for welders and fabricators. So for some of you who uh, may be familiar with some of my videos already, you, you should know that I don't like to do a whole lot of math, but unfortunately with geometry there is a little bit of math that we need to do. Uh, not a whole lot, just a little bit. It's uh, something that we can easily do with a basic calculator, uh, one that you can find for a couple bucks, or even you know the simple calculator mode on your phones. Um, we're going to be dealing mainly with shapes and angles, uh, particularly how we fit these pieces together, at what angle they're going to be joined together, and if we need to prepare any materials, um, you know, sort of like cutting them in various angles. So this is this is going to give us some information on how we can better understand geometry, which is going to uh, increase the quality of our work overall. And of course, it requires a lot of attention to detail. So like I said, we're going to be dealing a lot with angles. And so here we have a couple of examples and materials that we could prepare in a number of different ways. So this is stuff like, are we cutting a straight line into it? Are we cutting a certain angle into one of the sides? Uh, are we beveling our plates? And if so, uh, what angle of a bevel are we putting on there? And you know, things of that nature. And then when we talk about radius, diameter, and circumference, what I'm talking about um, using these concepts for is uh, any material that's basically round. So if you start thinking about pipe or just, you know, uh, circular tubing, if we think about round stock, uh, anything that is round, uh, we're going to be dealing with radius, diameter, and circumference in some way, shape, or form. So as we start talking about angles, I just want to go ahead and uh, tell you all that a full circle is 360 degrees. All right, so we can see that right here. 360 degrees means that if I start at one point on a circle, it doesn't matter which point I start on and I travel the entire length of that outer edge and then stop in the exact same place that I started, I will have traveled 360 degrees. Um, this can also, um, you, you can also think of this as, you know, when people say like, uh, so and so has done a 180. Basically, it means that they've gone from one direction and now they're in the complete opposite side. So basically, think of it as you're looking forward, and a 180 would basically just be turning around in a circle and facing the opposite direction. All right. So we've got some some examples right up here, where again 360 is the full circle, 180 is a half circle or semicircle. 90 degrees is what we call a right angle, or we can say that this is a quarter of a circle, and then of course you're 45. So some basic angles, you know, I had mentioned a few of them beforehand where you have the 360, the 180, the 90, and the 45. So these are just some terms to keep in mind. So an acute angle is an angle that is anything less than 90 degrees, Again, a right angle is 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is anything that is greater than 90 all the way up to 180 degrees because 180 degrees is a straight angle. A reflex angle is anything that is greater than 180 and a full rotation is 360. So out of all of these, basically the ones that we're gonna need to remember as welders and fabricators are the right angle, and of course, the acute meaning, uh, you know, like 45 or even 30 degrees, something around that. And then obtuse angles, straight angles, and of course, the full rotation. So how do we measure these angles? Well, there are various tools that we can use. Here are just a few examples. So we've got a couple of examples of protractors. And then we've got an angle finder right here. Uh, you can also use combination squares. Uh, those will give you um, some of the more basic angles, but there's also an attachment that goes onto the combination square that uh, acts pretty much as uh, a protractor or angle finder. So all of these are pretty similar. You'll notice that on one end of the protractor, it starts with a number, usually mm -hmm. zero or 180. And as you work your way across to the other side, 
Uh, if you go to the outer numbers on this scale, it goes from 0 to 180, and then it starts back at 0, and you can work your way back at 180 if you're using the inner set of numbers. So this uh, protractor can easily be used to measure angles on both sides. Uh, so can this. It's a little hard to see, but we'll see another example coming up soon. And uh, this angle finder, uh, normally they have a magnetic base or you just kind of hold on to it and you stick it on pieces of material that are uh, up at an angle and it's automatically going to turn and tell you what angle that piece is at. So here's a, here's a bigger picture. Um, it still might be a little small for you, but don't worry, there's another example that's coming up. Uh, but it, if you look really hard, you'll notice that on one set of numbers, the very top number is 90. The second set of numbers, it's 0. And I, I, I can barely make out that lower set of numbers. It looks like 40 and 50. But many commercial protractors will come uh, with the number 90 uh, at the very top or in, in the very center of the protractor. Um, this is where welders need to kind of switch it up a bit. As welders, we do not start with the 90 at the top. Instead, we replace it with zero. So instead of 90, it's going to be zero degrees up at the top. And we will count in one direction in increments of 10. And then the same thing with the other side. So instead of 90 being at the top and we count our way down this way, say 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, and then zero. Instead, it's going to be zero right here and then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and so on. And then the same thing with this side. So there's a, there's a reason why we do that. It's because um, when we're beveling plate, when we're beveling plate, all of our plates are typically already at a 90 degree. So we kind of consider that our baseline and that's why we put zero up at the top. So that way when we're beveling, it's easier to say we're going to put a 30 degree bevel. And so if this is our plate right here, just imagine a 90 degree edge of a plate instead of saying 30 degrees and then we come way down here, it's the exact opposite. We would only come to about right there and make our cut. So here's a, another example of a protractor where you can see 90 is up at the top, but instead of 90, we're going to replace, uh, replace those with zero. So as you can see on one scale, it starts with zero on one side, counts up to 90, and then all the way to 180. Inner set of numbers does the same thing, but in the opposite direction. Uh, protractors, the way that we welders and fabricators use them is by replacing the 90 with a zero and then counting down on either side in increments of 10. So it'd be zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, so on and so forth. And then the same thing to this side, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, all the way to 180. And here is another example of a uh, tool that we can use to measure angles. So you can see that one of the scales actually does have zero up at the top. So if you were to use uh, a tool like this to set your angle or find angles uh, in a welding shop, you're actually going to be going off of the scale of numbers that starts with zero up at the top. And so you can see what, I, what I've been talking about where it goes 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So this is the scale of numbers that we're going to be using instead of 90 up at the top in the center. So what's, what's uh, one way or one reason why we need to know this? Well, like I was saying, whenever we're beveling plate, we need to know that we put the correct uh, angle of bevel on these plates, uh, which is going to accumulate into what we call the groove angle. Okay. Not only that, but if you're, say, just welding a simple T-joint, if you were to put both pieces of plate you know, in their configuration, uh, most often your T-joint is going to form a 90 degree angle on both sides. So this is how we check to, you know, for squareness, one of the first uh, subjects we had talked about. Um, and so when we're talking about squareness or 90 degree angles, uh, typically think of a, a perfect T-joint 
Now, what happens if you're supposed to do a T-joint, but that vertical plate is supposed to be joined to the base plate at a certain angle? So this is where we need to take all this into consideration and really remember um, just the basics of geometry. And I know that this image has a whole lot on it, so let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. Let's keep it easy. So here are another couple of examples of a butt weld, uh, or a butt joint, sorry and they are going to be beveled. Both plates are going to be beveled, so that tells us that this is a V-groove. And so when we're talking about angles and butt joints, there are two angles we need to keep in mind. One is the bevel angle, so the angle to which both plates are going to be beveled at, and then the groove angle. So typically on your welding symbols, you're only going to be given the groove angle. And so when you're given the groove angle, we need to cut that in half. So let's say you were given 60 degrees for your groove angle. So your groove angle is going to be a total of 60 degrees, and that's going to be divided by both plates. So that tells us that each plate needs to be beveled at 30 degrees. So this is where geometry kind of comes into play and helps us to figure out how to cut or how to prepare our materials. And then here's just another... Uh, example of the same thing. We have two plates that are being beveled for a V-groove weld. So the, here's our total combined groove angle and then each bevel angle for each of the plates. And then you can see that there's the depth of the bevel, the root face, the root opening, the thickness of your plate, and the width of the plate. And then here are just a couple examples of plates that are beveled at varying degrees. So off the top, you should notice that the plates before they receive their bevel are exactly the same. They're all one inch thick and they're all three inches wide. Now I'm not including the length in here because from this view, you actually can't tell the length. So there's no reason to, add, to include this information. And then you'll notice that the root face for all four plates is a quarter of an inch, which tells us that our depth of bevel is three quarters of an inch. And so you can see this first plate is beveled at 20 degrees. This bottom plate is beveled at 30 degrees. This top right is beveled at 45, and the bottom right is beveled at 60. So you can see uh, the difference that an angle uh, has when you're you're placing different angled bevels on four different plates okay so this is why it's important to know especially for project fit up uh, and if any of you have uh, tried to weld a uh, a butt joint with a v groove you'll know that increasing or decreasing your groove angle can actually make the weld easier to complete or more difficult so here's just another example so this is uh, an example where um, the V groove groove angle is going to consist of 90 degrees. And so split that in half, each plate is going to be beveled at 45. And then here is another example where instead of 90 degrees, we're given a 60 degree groove angle, which tells us that both plates will be beveled at 30 degrees. And so again, you can tell the difference. So here we have two 30s, where in the previous slide they were two 45s. So you can notice the difference in their appearance. And then talking about the T-joint earlier on, um, I'm pretty sure this is something that never came across your mind, or at least you know not too much. So when you have a T-joint and they're perfectly level, both sides should give you a right angle or what we call a 90 degree angle. All right, so this is one way that we use geometry in welding and we didn't even know it. And so what happens if we have to, um, again, like one of the examples I brought up before, if we have to do a T-joint, but one of the plates has to be beveled first. So again, before the plates were beveled, they're the exact same shape. So one inch wide, or sorry, one inch in thickness, one inch in thickness, three inches tall, three inches tall, 
and the bottom plates are exactly the same as well. The only thing that differs here is the angle to which the vertical plates are being beveled at. So the one on the left is at 20 degrees and the one on the right is at 30 degrees. And so you can see what a 10 degree um, difference makes in the appearance of the plate, of the bevel. All right, so with 20 degrees, you don't have a whole lot of room to wiggle in here to get your, uh, your electrode in there and get some good penetration and good fusion. Whereas with the 30 degrees, you have a little bit more room uh, to reach all the way into the root. And then our next example, we have a couple of bigger bevels. So we have one at 45 and one at 60. So you can see what the difference again here is. So this is the difference of 15 degrees. So 45 degree, we have a little bit more room than a 30. So we'll definitely be able to get into that root and get some good penetration, some good fusion. And with the 60 degrees, we're going to have even more clearance to get in there and get some penetration and get more fusion. And here's one example of having to do a T-joint, but at a certain angle. So this is, this is just a fillet weld. So there's going to be no technically no no groove in here so this is just a regular fillet weld so actually let me backtrack a little bit so on these two t-joints we're going to be doing a slight groove weld so a single bevel weld and then once this is all welded up then we would do our fillet weld so as we move on to this example where it's a t-joint but the vertical plate is being welded on here at an angle this is just going to be a fillet weld. We're not beveling the plate to, you know, get in deep. This is just a fillet weld. This is just welding, you know, the two pieces together like you normally would in class. And so you can see that this plate is being joined to the bottom plate at a 45 degree angle. So this is just another example of using geometry. And then let's take a look at some real world applications. So Knowing how to set your materials together at the right angle uh, is going to make all the difference when making sure that your pieces fit together. So up here we have an image where two tubes are supposed to be joined and you can see that it looks really, really close. Um, the fit up is really good up at the top, but then on the side there's this gap and on the back side, it almost looks like the fit up is a little incorrect as well. It looks like this tube might be uh, going inside this tube right back here. So it's a little off. Instead of joining uh, with each other straight on at, at a straight angle, uh, they're, they're a little bit off. And so you can see what a difference in a couple of degrees being off can do. And then with this example right here, um, I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious. Instead of both pipes um, joining together nice and neat, one pipe is actually kind of shooting lower than the other and so this is where our geometry can make all the difference again and so another just simple example uh, with a table if you want a nice sturdy table those legs and that tabletop should form a 90 degree this is going to uh, incorporate checking for squareness so again checking for those 90 degrees because if your legs are joined to your table at anything other than a 90 degree you're going to have a table that looks like this where it needs some help to stand up and if you apply any weight it's probably just going to fall over and break all right so let's get into radius diameter and circumference so like i had mentioned earlier we're going to be using this anytime we're dealing with round stock, round tube, or pipe. And here are just some examples. I'll get into this at a later time, but there is a difference between round tube and pipe. So pipe typically has a thicker wall, whereas tube has a thinner wall. And like I said, we'll get into all the differences uh, at a later time. Break here for a short video. All right, so just some things that you should have picked up from that video, again, is how to um, 
how to identify a radius, find the diameter, and then find the circumference. So typically when we're welding and fabricating, the only two that we're going to be dealing with are diameter and circumference. And so if you're asking, well, when am I ever going to have to use this sort of, sort of thing, this sort of knowledge? Well, uh, think of pipe work. If you ever need to put a cap on the end of a pipe, you need to know the pipe's diameter or maybe the pipe circumference in order to cut out the proper size cap and then weld it on. If you say, if you cut a cap that is a smaller diameter than the pipe, well, the cap's not gonna fit properly or the cap might actually slide it into the pipe and you're not gonna get a good penetration and fusion all the way around. The same thing if you cut a cap that's too big in diameter uh, you're also going to have some problems. And then also when you're doing certain joints where you're um, joining pipe to pipe at varying angles, uh, we need to know the diameter of this t uh, pipe on top so that way we can make sure that it fits the hole cut out on the bottom pipe. So again, if we use a pipe that's too big in diameter, it, you're going to have an improper fit up or you're going to have to go back and do some rework. Okay. Another couple examples. So this is exhaust. So uh, I'm assuming car exhaust, maybe even motorcycle, I'm not sure. And so here it's knowing the diameter of all these pieces to make sure that they fit perfectly flush with each other. And they're not all cut perfectly straight. They're all cut at varying angles in order to give you this nice bend. So here we're not only using diameter but we're also using the angles uh, to cut and prepare our materials to be welded together same thing with car exhaust down here you need to know the diameter of your pieces to ensure proper fit up and then also angles because you know car exhaust has to go around all the the bottom parts of your vehicle in order to make it from you know the the engine all the way to the back bumper Another example of why we need to know diameter is because sometimes we have to drill holes. So if we're bolting things together, and I'm pretty sure some of you have put together things either on a car, on a motorcycle, you do some DIY projects at home, or you buy some furniture from Ikea, and you get to putting things together, and you're noticing that all the bolts except for one bolt line up and so you kind of have to just you know muscle it into place and hope that the bolt doesn't break as you're putting it in or you have to drill another hole to make it work you know it, it, the list goes on but basically knowing the diameter of the holes that you have to make plays a crucial part uh, in fabrication because um, if you're if you have a piece that you're supposed to bolt in place and it needs to have a certain clearance or you know it just has to be perfectly spot on because there are other parts that are going to be fitted around it then we need to know the diameter so that way we can space the holes apart properly or spacing the holes from the edges properly so here are just some quick formulas to remember so if you're looking for the diameter and you only know the length of the radius, all you have to do is multiply the radius by two, which you can see here, or you can read it right here. If you're looking for the circumference and all you have is the diameter, you will multiply the diameter by pi, which is right here, 3.14159. So these are two very important formulas to remember because you will be using these at some at some point in time during your welding or fabrication career. Um, and if you don't remember, well, keep notes or just know how to Google this when you need to. All right, students, that is the end of uh, having to know geometry for welders and fabrication. Thanks for watching.